picture this. Sun's rising, light northwest wind, cold temps, a few days before the full moon. That's right, it's wahoo season. Wahoo season in South Florida and the Bahamas. Late November here, South Florida guys, welcome to the Fish Blue Water Channel. Jamie Bunn, uh, we got a lot of guys that love to catch meat fish and love to chase wahoo that this is their favorite time of the year because particularly over in the Bahamas, I mean, there's wahoo to be caught right out front as well. Guys are having a lot of success with planers and just trolling out front. Um, but there's nothing like that high speed wahoo in the bite in the Bahamas when you hit it right. And so uh, it's been a minute for me personally since I have actually wahoo fished over in the Bahamas. Obviously it was tough there for a couple of years with COVID and all that stuff. And, um, but uh, we may have an opportunity at a trip next week. So uh, I dove back into the rig box just to see what we had, what may need some attention, if we had enough rigs. And I thought it would be uh, cool to show you guys um, some of the rigs that uh, we typically use here when we're high speed uh, trolling for Wahoo. And also show you guys how to completely build a rig from start to finish. So stay tuned. We are about to get riggy with it. All right, so um, Wahoo, Wahoo fishing. Um, you know, Wahoos obviously are a very aggressive fish. They are one of the fastest swimming fish in the ocean um, and they can close the distance on bait fish extremely fast. So that's part of the reason why I think high speed trolling has been so successful is that at the rate of speed, right, that you are pulling your baits, typically it's at a speed that is faster than you might target other species of fish like kingfish, dolphin, or tuna. It's not to say that you won't catch the occasional dolphin or tuna high speed trolling, but far less common because typically, you know, boats are pulling these lures anywhere from 15 to 18 knots. So, you know, when you talk about moving at a speed like that, where you're close to 20 miles an hour, um, you know, you typically want a, a lure style presentation that's gonna be very aerodynamic, that's gonna pull through the water and just under the s uh, surface of the water, um, very, in a very streamlined fashion, right? Not a lot of resistance. Uh, like your slower speed trolling for marlin, stuff like that, where they might pull like chugger style heads and, and knocker style heads up on the surface. Um, not as common, that's, not, that's gonna be very uncommon for this kind of fishing because of the style and the approach. So before we get into like constructing the rig, let's talk a little bit about like the parts and pieces. So, um, you know, this is, out in front of me, here's just three that have already been rigged up, essentially ready to rock with the exception of um, basically the loop that needs to be completed on the, uh, the other end of the cable leader here. But, um, you know, I've Wahoo fished off and on my whole life um, since I was in my early 20s. Um, that's well over 20 years ago. You can do the math. And I got to say, um, by, by and large, this style lure that I'm holding here in my hand has been the most effective, most popular. It's what you'll see in most of your tackle shops right now. Um, RJ Boyle, Real Deal, Custom Rod and Reel, um, for all the pre-rig stuff that they sell for the guys that, you know, would rather have it ready to roll than rig themselves. A lot of what you're going to see is, is going to be this lure right there in their store. And so what do you got? So for starters, um, your, your standard uh, wire is going to be uh, a 480-pound braided cable. Uh, you can fish heavier single-strand wire. Um, I'm not as big of a fan. Um, you know, some guys will argue that it tracks better. Um, maybe you get more bites. It's sleeker. Um, I don't know. I've never had many issues with this style rig. Easy to fish, easy to handle. Um, so 480 pound cable, uh, it is typically, um, you know, you ask five different guys, you might get five different answers, but the general length, um, on your cable is going to be anywhere from probably, I'd say three to five feet, um, coming down the rig from there. Uh, we have 
basically a, a Hawaiian eye Islander style lure. Um, and, and then underneath that, um, basically we have a doubled up um, octopus skirt. So there's two skirts, one inside the other. Um, I've got an egg sinker uh, up in the head of that, which also helps to kind of the lure to pull a little bit better, uh, keep it tracking down um, in the water behind the lead and your shot cord and all that. Uh, it also helps to serve as, can serve as a spacer. Um, and then this is um, an older style, uh, basically hook set um, that has some heat shrink tube to protect the crimps connections. Um, this one actually has um, a barrel swivel, which does allow a little bit more movement from the hook. And then we've got some heat shrink tube to keep the hook stiff and in place and not flopping around loosely when it's tracking, which I feel lends a, a better opportunity for um, a good connection uh, on the bite. And um, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's, it's a simple rig. It's, you, you know, it's not hard to tie or to rig. And we're going to show you that process now from beginning to end and talk about a few other things. And you'll see here, um, obviously I've got, uh, this is like a, you know, a pink and purplish blue with some Bonita style coloring other underneath with some uh, pink highlights. Uh, we've got an orange and black one right here for the darker side. Obviously, you can take a look at that and see that it looks very similar to uh, a peanut dolphin. You know, yellows, blues, greens, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, you know, everybody has their favorites. Black and red is a traditional, black and purple, blue and white. Um, you know, some guys will say they love light colors for light days, dark colors for dark days. I don't get into that so much. Um, I will tell you that I think it's important to have like a variety. My, my rig box behind me probably has 20 to 25 of these things ready to rock and roll for a couple of reasons. Um, Wahoo have very sharp teeth, as you guys probably know. You're pulling these things at a high rate of speed. You know, the impact of the bite, you know, a couple of fish. You know, you may find yourself throughout the day having to reskirt lures, uh, new skirts, things of that nature. So you're going to go through some terminal tackle and you may find that a certain color pattern could be light or dark um, is working better than the other. And so if you see that that's happening and you're getting more bites in one particular kind of color spectrum, maybe you start swapping out, right, and start changing rigs based on... Um, the bite pattern and what you see happening. So let's get into um, showing you guys how to get a rig set up. Now you'll see what I have here in my hand. This is a little different than what I just showed you in these pre-rigged ones. Um, I was actually in uh, RJ Boyle's shop yesterday um, grabbing a couple of things um, and talked to, to Nick, his store manager, about some stuff. And while I was there, uh, this these Wahoo wire rigs caught my eye. We talked a little bit about it and, and I liked the concept. So this is pre-rigged, ready to go. Again, 480 pound. Um, you have your heat shrink tube, which is basically this heat shrink tube right here before it is heated and adheres down to the wire um, and the spacer beads. And then these spacer beads right here um, run basically are stacked up on this cable um, to provide the spacing necessary to get the hook where you want it in the lure. And so looking at this, again, I'll show you that typically my recommendation is these are 12 inch skirts doubled up that are then cut back to allow the hook to hang just out of the bottom of the lure so that as they're pulling, you don't have to worry about um, any of the skirt getting embedded on the barb of the hook and in theory you should hopefully get a cleaner bite um, regardless of the angle that the fish may approach um, and attack obviously or eat the lure. Um, so again here's one that uh, and I'm going to show you how we did this on camera but this is already kind of pre-rigged and ready to go. 
Um, this is a, I've got a white 12-inch uh, skirt on the inside and a nice kind of, uh, it almost has got a light kind of Wahoo Bonita pattern, light blues and blacks. Two 12-inch skirts. I've got a three ounce egg sinker right here, uh, up inside there. And then obviously we've got our beads spaced out on the 480 pound that's been um, crimped, heat shrinked, and all that kind of stuff. So next up, we are gonna show you guys how to get this bad boy rigged up. So for starters, I'm gonna lay this out, right? Kind of on the table here, like so. And my, my lead is just behind the, finishes off just behind the neck of this skirt. So the, the whole concept here is these, these beads are basically uh, spacers that allow the hook to get as far back as you want it to. Um, and it's gonna stop right where it hits that lead, okay? So you can see where it hits that lead, I've still got mm, probably a good two inches of skirt that extends beyond that. And I want my skirt, in essence, to probably finish off mm, right around just below the heat shrink kind of area of, of the hook. So what I'm gonna do now is um, I've, got, I've got the skirt stretched out nicely and I'm basically got an eyeball mark on where I need to cut this skirt, which I'm gonna grab in my hands like so. Yeah, that looks good. Right about there, in order to cut off the excess that is not going to be needed. Now, if you probably, if you want to do anything, err on the side of maybe being a little long, because you can always cut a little more off, right? You can't ever add it. So basically just gonna take my scissors like so. That's all discard. Looks like I got a couple little slap. Extra guys right there. So now that's cut to length. It should be pretty good once I get it where I want it. And if I need to trim it up a little bit more, I can. So we're gonna take this like so. And that 480 pound cable. So we're, we're in. All right, so cable's in. Sliding down to where our spacers are. Voila, I think we're looking pretty good there. I'm gonna take a little bit off of this. I've got a side over here that's just a, a hair longer. So I'm gonna, and you can do that easily just like this. You can kind of go around if you want to and there's no like perfect science to it. It's not like the Wahoo are saying, oh my gosh, his cuts aren't exactly even. But that looks good. So it's hanging just above. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take a little more off that just to get it a little further away from that barb. So let me do this. Take off just all the way around, maybe about another half of an inch. Just to get it a little further away from the point of that hook. So I don't want it to in any way while it's pulling, have an opportunity to embed in that. So that looks pretty good there. Looks about right where I think I'd want it to be. Okay. So we've got our double squid skirt, octopus skirt on there, whatever you want to call it. And next up is our Islander lure. This has got a solid black head. Um, I kind of like this color combination. I've got a little black, a little white, a little blue. Um, and 
We got some white and some blues and some blacks in there. Again, do I think the Wahoo like really evaluated that hard? No, um, but I think you know they they certainly could tend to react to, as I already said, like certain color variations of color, dark and light, you know, from one time to the next or one day to the next, depending upon your condition. So I um, just got to get this. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. All right, so uh, tight fit. I went and grabbed actually a, another pair of dykes because those diagonal pliers weren't cutting that clean. And this 480 pound cable coming through the diameter of the hole on this Islander lure, it was super tight. And I'll just tell you, sometimes they can be finicky. You gotta just take your time and, and try to kind of work it through there, twist it. Um, I actually kind of cut this cable a little bit of an angle to, to get it to through, but you can see it's that snug of a fit that it's not even like sliding down on its own. But now that we've got it on, I'm gonna bring it down and you've got yourself right there one bad mofo lure that I know is going to get eaten if we go across next week. So the last step in this process is to actually get a loop end on this, which ultimately this would connect to a snap swivel on our shock cord. Um, and, uh, and then the other end of the shock cord attaches to the rod. Um, if I had some little thimbles, I would probably use them, which a thimble is just that little horseshoe piece of terminal tackle to kind of that the braided cable wraps around. I don't, but I do have, I did uh, find some chafing cable that um, I had, um, which this 480 should slide right up in there. And basically the whole idea there is just to protect a little bit any of the wear from the pressure of the snap swivel on the braided cable. I don't honestly, do I feel like it's absolutely necessary? I would probably tell you no, but I got it. So we'll use it. All right. So right here is a double barrel crimp that we're going to use. Uh, very important guys. You do not want to use aluminum crimps. Um, on this braided uh, cable because the aluminum, the way it will react with this cable, um, it will actually cause corrosion that could allow for um, the cable to break inside and you've got obviously a not good situation in terms of um, the possibility of breaking under pressure. I got the wrong size crimp. Let me grab the other crimps out of the box. So it's as simple as running the 480 through there. I actually uh, slid a little piece of heat shrink tube down on this that I'm gonna uh, heat up over top of the crimp once that connection is made and finished. There we go, got it through. I'm going to come back down through that crimp, give myself a little tag in, pull it around like so, keep pulling it until that chafe tube comes nice and tight. And now we're ready to, we are ready to crimp it off right there. All right, guys. So I got the proper size crimpers. Uh, I'm going to open the tool up. And I'm going to probably go right into the second set of teeth or jaws on this. There we go. That's crimped off nice and tight now. Probably could have gone with the third set on that, but it'll be fine. And now I got this little piece of heat shrink tube. I'm going to fire up this torch that I have here.
And we're just gonna uh, heat the uh, heat shrink tube down on the bottom side of that crimp. And the whole reason we're doing that is really just to try and protect it's not even really for cosmetic purposes. It's just to protect the tag ends that may come out of that heat, tr um, that crimp, so that your hands don't get all burred up when it's all said and done. Um, if you happen to be kind of bringing the fish in. You know, let's say you're, let's say you are, you've hooked a fish, you got him to the boat, you're grabbing the shock cord, your leader in the fish, guy's getting ready to gaff it, and you reach down and you get a little close. Sometimes without that little bit of uh, heat shrink tube, a lot of times guys get uh, tag ins from that sharp, those sharp metal shavings if there's anything sticking out. In their hands their fingers which is painful and uh, so that's the main reason that you use heat shrink tube on that end if you want to we got that connection there there's our lure and at the end of the day this thing is now ready to fish mm -hmm.